This video is the continuation of the Cayley theorem that says every group is isomorphic to a group of permutations and I was building this G bar, the right regular representation of G. As a group I took the unities, the U12, the group of units module 12, that, that is the set of integers less than 12, and relatively prime to 12 under multiplication module 12. Easy to check that it is 1, 5, 7 and 11. So I'm building now U12 bar uh, through the right regular representation, or that is the right regular representation through this TG. Okay, the transformation through element 1, it was really easy. We got uh, exactly the same. I also remind that uh, this example is good for those in the proof that were a bit skeptic why the transformation of G was a permutation. Now you get the, the answer through this example. Okay, now I'm going to do the transformation 5 of 1, 5, 7 and 11. So that will be, do not forget that this is right multiplication. Please watch the previous video before this one. So 1 times 5, well that will be 5. 5, this 5 times 5, this 5 here will be 25, but module 12, 12 that's 1. Um, 7 times 5 equals 35, module 12, this is 11. And 11 times 5, module uh, 55, but module 12, that's 7, right? 7. OK. So this will be the second permutation. Now for the transformation through 7, 1 times 7 equals 7, right? So here we have 7. Uh, 5 times 7 equals 35, module 12, that is 11. Uh, 7 times 7 equals 1 and uh, um, 11 times 7 equals 5. And now the transformation of 11 will be 1 goes to 11, 5. So 1 times 11 is 11, 5 times 11 is 7. 7 times 11 is 5, and 11 times 11 is 1. OK, so you have the, the four transformations, T1, T5, T7, and T11. So what we are going to do now is we are going to take the Cayley table for U12, and we are going to compare it with the Cayley table for U12 bar. So looking now here at the Cayley table for U12 and the Cayley table for U bar 12, the right regular representation of U12 OK, so this should be pretty clear from these tables that U12 and U12 bar only have a difference in notation, but they are the same, right? So U12 bar is the set of these transformations, transformation 1, transformation 5, transformation 7, 
and transformation 11 okay under function composition of course um, so at the end of the day this Cayley theorem allows us to reach this conclusion I call it abstract abstract groups are not different from permutation groups and this isomorphism uh, is, has been really important in these areas of mathematics. So now we are going to make a quick list of some very important properties of isomorphisms. Suppose phi is an isomorphism from a group G onto a group G bar. So G is isomorphic to G bar through some um, map phi. Okay, first property, phi carries the identity of G to the identity of G bar. So a uh, group isomorphism preserves identities to for every integer n and for every group element a in g a to the power of n phi equals a phi to the power of n oh i prefer i I don't like this notation. I'm going to write it. Um, phi to the power of n. I don't like this notation, to be quite honest. Um, equals phi of a to the power of n. Okay? So n should be an integer. Okay? And a, of course, has to be an element in the group G. Okay? Three. For all elements A in B in G, um, if AB equals BA, that means that phi of a times phi of b equals phi of b times phi of a. So if a and b commute, if and only if, if and only if, phi of a and phi of b commute to. Uh, g is a billion if and only if g bar is a billion. Five. Um, if the order of a equals the order of phi of a for all a in g, meaning isomorphisms preserve orders. Uh, 6. If G is G is cyclic if and only if G bar is cyclic. 7. Very important. Um, the equation x to the power of k equals b has the same number of solutions I'm going to write it has the same number of solutions in g of course in g as the equation x to the power of k uh, equals phi of b 
in g prime x to the power of k equals b we'll have the same number of solutions in g as x to the power of k equals phi of b in g prime of course um, um, k k is an integer okay and uh, b b b is in g that's obvious right this is very important and we somehow we already use it um, and this one is very important if phi is an isomorphism from g to uh, g bar uh, that means that the inverse from g bar to g is also an isomorphism okay and the last one is if k is a subgroup of g that implies that phi of k uh, and what is phi of k phi of k will be phi of k such that uh, k is in k k big k okay so phi of k will be uh, phi of k will be this k so phi of k will be a subgroup of g bar so if k is a subgroup of g phi of k will be a subgroup of g bar uh, i'm not going to make any proof for this because this is really easy if you have any problem with any of these uh, proofs just let me know please okay let let us use just this problem this seven this this one is very important this x to the power of k equals b uh, in a group isomorphism it has to have the same number of solutions in a group g then g bar the, the uh, g bar the, the isomorphic group as x to the power of k equals phi of b um, let us consider for instance um, c and uh, r okay so uh, uh, so the non-zero complex numbers and the non-zero real numbers um, for instance under multiplication and under the usual multiplication okay so question is are the non-zero complex numbers under multiplication isomorphic to the non-zero real numbers under multiplication is this true you use property 7 you pick an equation like x to the power of 4 equals 1 now in this group this equation has four solutions but in this group this equation has only two solutions okay so if this was an if this was an isomorphism it should have the same number of solution and it doesn't so no many doesn't matter how hard you try you will never define an isomorphism from these two 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 groups because property seven uh, uh, will not hold <laughs>